Hello, I have a very special unboxing to do today. And it's special more because of the sentimental value than the actual value of the item. So, what we have here today is the RCA RP1820. Now, the RP1820 is a pretty standard cassette Walkman type player, a little portable cassette player. What makes it a special to me is that this was the very first music player that I ever had as a child. I was probably about eight years old when I got this, and it made a profound impact on my life. So I've been a music lover ever since getting this thing and some cassettes. So I was able to find a brand new sealed in the box, new old stock RCA RP1820. Now, not only do I have one of these, but I have two of them, two new old stock ones. I'm going to be opening the one where the box or the card is a little bit more damaged on it, and we'll use that one, and we're going to keep one of them sealed. So the very first cassettes that I remember remember getting as a child, I was eight years old and it was a church rummage sale. I got a copy of the first Van Halen album in Sticks Edge of the Century. As you know, I'm a huge Van Halen fan, so since I was eight years old and got this in my first Van Halen cassette, I've been a Van Halen fan ever since. So, let's not waste any more time, let's dig into the RCA RP1820 and see if this thing still works. You know, it's been in the box since the 90s, you know, this was probably an early 90s model. Um, let's see, let's dig into it and see if everything works. Okay, here we are with the RCA RP1820 and um, let's let's take a look at it here. We're going to unbox it soon. So it says AM FM stereo cassette player. It has bass boost. It has separate rewind and fast forward controls. I always hated those ones that just have fast forward. RCA made another model that I had when I was younger that didn't have a rewind. And that wasn't very good at all. So, let's, without further ado, we should probably get into this. Oh, also it has, this model has adjustable lightweight stereo headphones. Those headphones are really terrible. I'm going to probably test using those right now, but I'm not a huge fan. Those are probably what did in a good amount of my hearing. And it has removable belt clip. Those things break pretty quick. Mine lasted for a good while, but I think I eventually broke it. So, let's, without further ado, let's go ahead and tear this thing open and see what we have. So, I have some tools here, and um, let's see, there's a staple here, so let me use this staple remover and do it the right way, maybe, let's see. I'm still going to need to pull that out. Yeah. Okay, so the staple is loosened. Let's get a letter opener in here and try to open this carefully so I don't mess up the card back too much. Let's see. It was already starting to come apart and places the packaging. This is opening really easy, so the card will be in good condition once once I'm done here. Because it's opening really easily. Not, I mean this is probably from the early 90s, so it's been sitting in the package for some time.
get this open here. There's a staple out. Okay. That went smoothly. So let's set that aside and take a look here. First let's grab these headphones. Oh man, these these headphones were are probably terrible. I'm going to use them to test, but oh man, these things are probably all tinny. I mean, just God, I don't know how I didn't break these the very first day. The plastic is so thin on those headphones. Let's set those aside for a second. Let's take a look at the player itself. It is wrapped in a inner plastic sleeve. It has the instruction manual and warranty paperwork and whatnot taped to the bag. It's taped to the bag that that came in. Let's take a look and see what paperwork. Let's see what paperwork this thing comes with. Trying not to mess up the bag too much. Okay. So, warranty card. Use and care guide. Important information. Read this important information before using your headset. Well, if I read it, it was probably 30 years ago, so, no, or more. Let's, let's go ahead and toss that aside and let's get into the real fun. Oh, here's the uh, belt clip for it. So, that just attaches to the back here. So let's go ahead and take it out of the bag. This thing has survived all this time. New old stock. Now to be opened up by me. Who had another one back when it was new. Oh yeah. So here we go. One thing I remember about these is the little AM FM stereo bass boost thing. Yeah, that gets that the, that lettering rubs right off in like a day or two. I think maybe the same with the radio. It seems like the RCA logo stuck stuck around for a while, but it seems like that rubbed off and maybe the numbers for the radio it's just kind of printed on the on the plastic there. Very very clean as to be expected from a brand new tape player. Let's let's take another look at that. Yep. Okay. Let's look at the back. Let's go ahead and we'll have the back held up here. Let's go ahead and attach the belt clip. There we go. Belt clip attached. Look in the battery compartment here. Never been any batteries in it. Okay, so I have some rechargeable batteries. I've noticed in the past sometimes with tape players they don't like the voltage or something, but we're going to try the rechargeables first. I have some regular batteries here if I need it as well if, these, if the tape player tries to play the wrong speed or something. But let's go ahead and battery this thing up. Okay, so now it's got the belt clip on and the batteries. It's almost ready to rock and roll here. Let's get the, the bad little headphones out. I can't wait to listen to this with better headphones. But let's go ahead and start. So here's where 
the headphones plug in and here's the bass boost control and here's where to switch it from radio to tape I think it was already on radio so that might I think I heard some noise from it <laughs> so we plug that all the way in okay so now this thing should be ready you know let me go ahead and test the headphones with the radio real quick and make sure let's see how it sounds through the radio real quick here Okay, so yep, yeah, it does work with um, the FM radio. It has stereo and everything. So let's take a look and make sure the tape mechanism rolls here and, and everything goes right before I go start sticking a tape in this 30 plus year old new old stock tape player. Let's see if it looks like it's going to work first. So I'm going to... Let's see if you can see this too. I'll try to put it so you can see. Let's see what happens when I hit the play button. Okay, we have the play rolling. Rewind works. Fast forward works. Stop works. Okay, so let's hit play again. Capstan and pinch roller look good. Tape head is new. And the reel is rolling. So I think we're safe to go ahead and try a tape in this thing. Now I just grabbed a tape that I had on hand that's also one that I had when I was a kid. And that is Green Day Dookie. Very good tape to test it out. I think it's a pretty good sounding tape too. It's a really loud tape that uses that. They really use that um, Dolby HX Pro to really to really record this hot. So let's go ahead and get our tape. Our tape is rewound. That's perfect. So the tape slides into this upside down, of course, since the mechanism is up top. So now it has a tape in there and I'm going to go ahead and get ready to test the tape and see how that works here. Okay, so it sounded like it was going too fast, and that could be due to the batteries. Like I said, I've had that problem before with rechargeables. Let's see. Let's try different batteries in this thing. We get this battery out. Come on. There we go. Let's try some regular alkaline batteries in this and see if maybe it sounds a little bit better. Okay. Now we have some alkaline batteries in it. And let's put the tape back in and see 
what we have now. Okay, so it still seems like it's running a little too fast, not as bad as with the other batteries. So we'll have to take a look at that. Maybe it needs a new belt, but it runs, the sound is okay, everything, the basic functions are working. So it might just have an old dried out or, or too tight belt, and it's going just a little bit too fast, I believe. So we'll have to look at that later, but for now, here it is, the RCA 8, RP1820. We've unboxed it, and we've taken a look at a piece of my childhood memories. After a little messing around, I got the speed worked out on this. Now, a lot of portable cassette players and non-portable cassette players have an internal speed adjust control in them and that is the case with this one. Unlike most of them where it's easy to adjust it while it's playing to get the speed, this one had one that you could not get to while the tape is playing. So it was a matter of many, many tries. Too fast, too slow, too fast, too slow. But I eventually got it locked in. So now it's pretty much locked in and it works well. So there we have it my original RCA tape player ready to roll again. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you watch more if I make them. Thank you.